Uh, first question will go to Stu Jackson. Stu. Hey, what's going on? How are you? What's up, buddy? I wanted to ask you about Ashawn Robinson. It just seems like he's been getting a lot of deserved praise and attention for his play in, in the playoffs. I'm wondering from your perspective, what, what stood out about that, you know, just the way he's shown up and, and really made his presence felt here in the postseason? Yeah, I'm extremely uh, proud of Ashawn. You know, just uh, the way that he, uh, he approached this season. Um, when you talk about um, his, uh, his report training camp, dropping all of the weight that he uh, was asked to drop. I was actually, I challenged him a little bit and he accepted the challenge. He came back, you know, uh, lost a whole bunch of weight and uh, was able to move around a, a whole lot better. Um, you can see his change of direction has picked up, his level of play, his attention to detail, um, just been an all around teammate, you know, and I'm just extremely excited about what he's been able to bring to the uh, front. Um, his, his physical play in the run game has been, um, you know, extremely important for us to, to have the success that we've been able to have. And uh, I just contribute so much to what Ashawn has done. But it started with just him changing his body, him being coachable, uh, just trusting uh, the process, trusting me and, uh, and, uh, and the coaches and things that the coaches have asked him of him. And he's been able to do that for us. And uh, he's just been an all-around great, great player for us. So uh, Ashawn has been awesome. We'll take our next question from Eric Williams. Eric, how you doing, man? What's up, B? How you doing, man? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. Good to see you, bro. You too, man. Hey, there's been a lot of talk about um, Aaron Donald being more vocal this season um, and, you know, kind of um, Von Miller uh, being a part of that in terms of having conversations with him. I just wanted to know from your perspective, um, what's that been like? Has and, and why has he uh, taken on more of a vocal role, if that's the case? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, AD's always been a leader. He's been vocal amongst the defensive line group. And I think the experience that uh, Vaughn has brought to the group and, you know, just having been on a, on a Super Bowl team and understanding the little things uh, that it takes and how important a voice like AD would carry amongst our defense and amongst the team. And, uh, and, and, and with AD understanding that and wanting this so much, uh, it's, it shows you the humbleness and the humility that he's had to be able to receive that from a guy like Vaughn. And yet uh, you see that come to fruition. And so it's just, it's just an awesome uh, thing uh, by those guys and by Vaughn understanding the little uh, bit more that a guy like AD could uh, could do and could provide for our team, right? And, and you know, it's paid off for us. And, uh, and it's just been genuine. It's been a natural leadership role. It hasn't been anything that's been forced by AD. It's just, you know, he found his way of, of, of really staying genuine in his approach. And the guys have, have really taken to that. And so it's been awesome for us. We'll take our next question from Jake. What's up, Jake? Hey, Coach, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for asking. Uh, you obviously work with some uh, pretty special players on that D-line. Um, I don't think I need to go into detail about that. I'm pretty sure you know how incredible it is. Um, your job is never easy, per se, but – you know, having the guys that you do, does it make your job just, just a little bit easier at times, you know, with the, the, the incredible talent you have? Yeah, Jake, I've been extremely uh, blessed as a position coach. Uh, when you talk about, you know, having guys like Aaron Dono and, uh, you know, Ashawn Robinson, you know, Greg Gaines, Sebastian, when he was out there, uh, Leonard Floyd, uh, you know, Von Miller and his leadership. I mean, just guys that's played a lot of ball. You know, you have guys that's played a lot of ball that understand what it takes, but just great human beings as well. I mean, you talk about guys that are able to uh, allow themselves to be coached hard because my approach has been it's, it's a little bit different. If you really know me, I like to, you know, I, I, I think I kind of grind it out a little bit. I'll just say that. And, and for guys to be able to receive that and trust that. You know, that takes trust both ways. That takes trust uh, with those guys trusted in myself and the rest of the coaches and also the coaches trusted in these guys and understanding, you know, that it's a 50-50 thing and being able to, to collaborate on, on, on how we get the job done, understanding that we're all uh, trying to accomplish one goal. And, uh, and I think it's, it's, it's really easy when you have human beings like that that also take coaching hard 
and that allow themselves to be coached that way. And it's, it's just been awesome for us. Our next question will come from Manuel. Manuel. Hi, coach. How are you doing? Doing well. How are you? Good, good. Thank you for asking. Uh, so my name is Manuel Lindstein from Sonar's Latin American Network. With the NFL honor ceremony coming up in a while, do you think Aaron Donald is the defensive player of the, of the year? <laughs> I think uh, he's a guy that, that's v deserving of the defensive player of the year every year. And uh, being biased as his position coach, uh, of course he should win it. You know, and I would tell anyone uh, who would ask that question that, yes, he's deserving of it. I mean, when you talk about a guy that's, that's been able to, uh, you know, achieve greatness every time he stepped on the field, every year, there was a level of, uh, you know, excitement around him. But, but also, you know, he, he just seems to continue to, to raise the bar. I mean, whether it be in the sack category, whether it be in the tackle for loss category, whether it be in the tackle category. When you talk about this year, he's had more tackles in a single season than he's ever had in his career. And I mean, that's just special because it just tells you that he's always finding ways to get better as an interior defensive lineman that faced so much attention that he's been able to, that he faces every game. I mean, it's unbelievable the way this guy continues to have success. And obviously there's a collaboration in terms of how we can figure out ways to uh, deter some of that attention. And it helps when you bring in guys like uh, Vaughn and when, uh, you know, Flo steps up his level to play, Greg Gaines and, uh, and uh, A'shaun Robinson and those guys. I mean, it's just been awesome for him. But, I mean, that doesn't stop teams for, you know, still applying the same attention to A.B. And so when he can have that type of success and find ways to get better every year, um, I mean, this guy, is, he's special. And, and, of course, he deserves to be defensive player of the year. Not even a question. Awesome. Uh, so just a reminder, if you have a question, please raise your hand. And we'll call on you right now. No one has their hand raised, so I'll wait for someone. There we go. Next question will come from Joel. What's up, Joel? What's up? Um, so Gus Bradley, you worked with him there in with the Chargers. What, what, what did you learn from Gus and what, what did he mean to you and your career? Gus is so special to me, uh, not only as a coach, but just as a person. I mean, you talk about just a guy who's just a genuine um, a person who cares about everyone. And he talks about guys just getting better and just, you know, um, you know, servant leadership. You know, Gus is a guy who talks about just finding ways to get everybody better right when there is no agenda. And I think I've taken that approach and that's something that I've learned from Gus uh, just here with my guys. You know, one of the things that I truly talk to the defensive line about every year and constantly reiterate those things is that, you know, I'm in it for you guys, you know, and I want nothing from you. All I want is to, for you to get better, right? And then I want you guys to know that there's that there's no agenda behind that, that it's truly because I care about you as a person, truly because I care about your success. And I know you guys care about this sport and about your family. And when you can do those things, right, it carries over in life. When you talk about helping people and helping people get better and not expecting anything to come from that, but because it's just a genuine love and appreciation for one another. And I think Gus truly embodies that and uh, that's something that I'll never uh, forget and I'll always carry with me. We'll go back to Manuel. Hi, Coach. Um, do you have a message for the Latin American fans where the sport is slowly starting to grow? Excuse, uh, can, you, can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 sure. If, do you have a message? for uh, the Latin American fans where the sport is slowly starting to grow? Yes, I would just want to tell everyone that uh, we just appreciate you guys here in Los Angeles. And we just, you know, would love to continue to have more Los Angeles fans, uh, you know, uh, Los Angeles Ram fans in the, uh, in the, in the Mexican uh, community. And we just want to continue to uh, ask for your support and we appreciate everything. You know, we hopefully we can, uh, we can, um, you know, have a, a whole bunch of, uh, you know, more uh, fans, you know, coming from the community. So that'll be awesome from you guys. And we just appreciate that. And thank you so much for the support. Next question will come from Nora. 
Hi, Eric. Uh, just curious what it's been like getting to know Von Miller a little bit over the last few months. He seems like such a unique person, unique player, so positive and enthusiastic. Uh, do you have any favorite memories from the, the past couple of months when you think about working with him and what has that been like? You know, it's funny because I was fortunate to meet Von uh, when I was with the Los Angeles Chargers. We were able to coach in the 2019 Pro Bowl. And, um, you know, I was coaching the AFC defensive line and I met Vaughn and a bunch of the, you know, other Pro Bowl guys at that particular time. And, uh, and he's just a funny dude. You know, you talk about just a funny guy, you know, has his own way uh, from a leadership standpoint. I really love that. He's very vocal in his own way. Um, and he's just an awesome guy to be around. You know, has a great spirit about him. Really, really genuine heart. Uh, and he cares about people. He cares about the team. Uh, I mean, Von talks to everyone in the building. I mean, he's just an awesome dude. He's a, he'll be a guy that's a Hall of Fame as a teammate and obviously a Hall of Famer um, on the football field. And that's one of the things you just got to appreciate a guy like Von. I mean, he brings a lot to the table and uh, we're lucky to have him. And I'm, um, I'm just happy for his friendship and, uh, and for him to be able to, uh, to be here, you know, help us you know, try to help us achieve this goal. We'll go back to Manuel. Coach, last question from my side. What will be your ideal meal if things go well after the game? I'll be like, thank God we won it. You know, it's awesome. We're Super Bowl champions. Awesome. Our next question will come from Joel. Yeah. Hi. Uh, how did you make the... Uh, what what led to you making the jump from from college ball to the NFL when you when you got that job with the Chargers? You know, it was just a a, a, a you know a awesome opportunity. Um, I was actually at the University of Texas in San Antonio, and um, Giff Smith and Gus Bradley called me when Coach Anthony Lynn got the job with the uh, Los Angeles Chargers. And uh, Giff Smith is uh, he was the defense he's the defensive line coach with the Chargers right now still there to this day. But Giff and I Giff actually coached me when I was playing ball at Georgia Tech. He was my position coach, my defensive line coach, and we kept in uh, in contact throughout the years. My time, whether I've been at Oklahoma State University coaching or whether it was at the University of Texas in San Antonio, UTSA coaching. Uh, he was always a mentor of mine. And, uh, and when you can stay in contact with those guys, whether it be for technique, uh, um, things that you can discover from a technique standpoint to continue to uh, grow as a coach, um, you know, he was always there for me. And uh, when the position presented itself and, um, and Coach Lynn got the job, Giff called me and uh, Gus called me shortly thereafter asking if I wanted to, to come aboard and I uh, Went on an interview and, uh, you know, it was it was awesome. It was, you know, history from that point on. So I'm just super fortunate that a window of opportunity presented itself and I was in position to receive that. We'll take our next question from Daniel. What's up, Daniel? Hey, Eric, how's it going? Um, well, man. I'm curious, when you... As a position coach, coach a player as good as Aaron Donald is. How how challenging is that? And how do you how do you approach coaching a player that you know many believe is you know the best player in the league? You know, it's not challenging at all. It's actually fun, you know, but I'm just extremely fortunate because of the type of person that Aaron Donald is. You know, I I, I was fortunate to be able to uh, tell his parents how uh, blessed and excited that I was as a position coach. But more importantly, the way that he was raised, and I just wanted to, to congratulate them for raising such a special young man. When you talk about just well-mannered, uh, very respectable, uh, you know, always, you know, attention to detail. He's always on the screws with everything. He's the first one in the building. He's the last one to leave the building. I mean, he, he works extremely hard, as everyone know about. Um, I mean, he's just, the, you know, the ideal guy. And when you're able to have a guy like that, who's arguably the best in the world, who I personally feel like is the best to ever play the sport at the defensive line position, um, you know, I, I mean, you can coach that guy hard. And when you can coach him hard and, and, and there's, you know, he accepts that type of coaching, it makes it a, a bit easier to coach the rest of the guys. And I'm saying that from the standpoint that people look at him 
you know, as Aaron Donald, the, the best player in the world. And he and coach tell him that 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 rep looked like a piece of trash and he'll get back and do it again. Well, the other guys, when you get on those guys for something, not looking at it as the way that it should be, you know, it makes those guys um, snap back to reality a bit quicker and understand that, hey, coach want me to get better and I need to do this right because if AD can take this type of coaching, then I, I surely can't. And I think that's what makes the, the group a bit tighter. That's what, uh, you know, where, where his presence and, and just the type of person that he is, uh, his value being in a room, you know, helps in that particular manner. And that's, that's why I appreciate him. And I just, I just credit it to his parents more than anything. Okay, we have approximately 10 minutes left in this session. Just a reminder, if you want to ask a question, just raise your hand. Okay, Daniel, I'm going to allow you to talk. Got it. Got another one just on Aaron. When, when you talk to, you know, interior defensive linemen around the league and they, they watch Aaron and he's just able to do things that they physically are unable to do. So they say, you know, sometimes it's hard to, you know, model their game after him because he's such a unique player. Right. As a coach, because he's so unique in the things that he does, does that make it harder to coach him or do you have to coach him differently because of some of those unique things that he's able to do as a defensive lineman? No, it's like, uh, it's like being, it's, as a coach, for me, it's like, you know, being a kid in a candy store. You know, you can, it's, I tell people all the time, it's like playing flag football and you just grab your guys, you huddle them around and you draw plays in the dirt, right? And AD is the guy that you can just create a route for and tell him to go out and execute it. It's the same thing in pass rush. You know, I can just create different pass rush packages and put him in certain positions and he'll go out and execute it. And that just makes it like the ultimate guy, if you will. I mean, he's the ultimate mismatch as a defensive lineman. And so it's like awesome to have a guy like that that can play every position across the board with extreme athleticism, power, explosiveness, yet having the technique to, to apply with those things makes him a special player. And then not to mention his brains, his above the neck approach, being able to have the mental stability to be able to understand what it is that you're trying to get done and go out and execute it at a high level. I mean, it's just phenomenal. And so, I mean, that's where he's the ultimate chess piece. Daniel, you want to come back to you for another question? So just based on what you're saying, it seems like there's really like no limit to, you know, what you can think of with him. So does that allow you to be, you know, m like the most creative version of yourself as a coach when you're yes. game planning each week? That's exactly right. And that's why I'm super fortunate because, I mean, he brings a lot out of me as a position coach, you know, and, it, and it's and it's challenging for me in a good way because it's like, wow, like what else could we do with this guy? Like what else could I think of? How else can we create a one-on-one -on -one situation for him? We can put AD right here. Maybe we can do this. You can mismatch him in a run game and in a pass game, and uh, he'll execute it the way that it needs to be executed. And then you have guys around him that can also, uh, you know, play those certain positions that you may need them to, to allow that to uh, come to fruition. And I think when you have the ultimate chess piece like an Aaron Dino, it just makes your defense a whole lot better. My apologies, Jordan. My uh, Zoom was messing up, but next question will come from Jordan Rodriguez. What's up, Jordan? Hey, Henny, how are you? And Skylar, no well. need to apologize. It's totally fine. We'll, we'll get there. I appreciate you guys. Um, one of your uh, past rushers at one point in the season kind of described to me like the way you guys designed the rush as kind of a painting almost and all the different brush strokes that, that go into it. I'm wondering how you see the rush, like if you were going to look at it from a sky view down, all the pieces that move together and all the guys that have to, to wordlessly play off each other. And what about that kind of excites you with these versatile guys that you have? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's extremely exciting, but, you know, you build everything around Aaron Donald. You figure, mm -hmm. you know, that teams are going to, uh, you know, there's going to be attention, you know, drawn to the guy. And so when you understand that and you can place him in, particular, you know, situations on the field or different places on the field, then maybe there won't be as much attention. And if there is attention, then maybe we could do this and maybe we can do that. 
without giving you the details behind the rush plan, Jordan. Uh, that's the mindset every week where you can find a way, you know, using the, the guys that you have, putting them in certain positions on the football field and watching it come to fruition, understanding the attention that he des respectfully deserves. And uh, when you have guys like that, I mean, it, it, you should be able to utilize that. And that's just about, you know, putting your guys in position to have success because then it helps the guys around them. It helps the, the, the secondary. It helps the linebackers. It helps the other defensive linemen. You know, when you can utilize his skill set, uh, you know, it just makes the team better. And we'll take our last question from Julian. Hey, Eric, um, congrats on making the Super Bowl. I want to ask, how important is it for you guys to set the tone on the line of scrimmage? Obviously, you take care of the defensive line and you do the running game as well. So how do you guys plan on setting the tone on Sunday? Well, every week there's a mentality up front that we want to be able to set the tone. We want to be able to rearrange the line of scrimmage. And it starts with stopping the run. If you can stop the run every week, and uh, try your best to make a team one dimensional. And with the guys that we have that we feel like we can affect quarterbacks on a weekly basis, uh, you know, we think we can have some type of success. And uh, if we, it's just really up to us to be able to get that done because teams understand that as well. And, uh, and they're going to be creative in their approach to not allow those things to happen. And we just got to be able to sometimes weather the storm, calm down a little bit, and uh, just stay true to the game plan. And I think our guys have done a really good job of that throughout the course of the season of understanding how teams are going to try to attack us, but also understanding their counterpunch and uh, being ready to adjust accordingly because we've seen it happen, whether it be in practice, whether it be being able to predict the next move. Uh, and all of those things are allowed, have allowed us to have success. And I think our guys are, you know, they just take pride in being prepared. And, uh, and it's been awesome for us. We have really good, good players and, and have guys that understand what's going on and, and how we're, we're, you know, we're, we're being attacked, if you will, and, how, and, and what's our uh, uh, mindset uh, to start the game and uh, more importantly, finish the game. With no more hands up and uh, three minutes left in the session, I thank you all for coming out and listening to Coach Henderson speak today. And thank you, Coach Henderson, for your time today. Greatly thank appreciate it. Thank you, guys. It. Thank you very much.